In the law of the Tanakh, how many wives how many wives did Nabi Musa have? Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, the, the question is about what practices happened in Old Testament law. And it is true in Jesus Old Testament. Jesus was a boy. Oh, sorry, are we going to have a conversation or are we going to have no, a... No, sorry, I do not, I don't want to be... Do you want to have a conversation? Yes, yes, we'll have a conversation. Then let's have a conversation. Yes, yes. That means when you talk, I listen. And what happens when I talk? I apologize. Okay, right. So, ladies and gentlemen. The, 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 what's your question? Yes. Elias. Is absolutely, Elias, if you like. Elias is absolutely right to point out that in the Old Testament law, there was the practice of polygamy. However, he's not talking to a Jew, ladies and gentlemen. He's talking to a Christian. And a Christian believes that Christ started a new covenant. And in that new covenant, monogamy is the law. The idea of one man and one woman. Now, the brother asked me to show him the evidence, ladies and gentlemen, that polygamy can be practiced in Islam secretly, that you can have a secret second wife. And when he's ready for me to show that evidence, I will do so. But what I want to point out, ladies and gentlemen, very briefly, is the injustices of the practice. If you're the first wife, and then your husband comes to you and says, or doesn't say and sleeps with you and has sex with you having just had sex with a woman that you don't know about how many of you would con how many of you women would consider that just how many of you would consider that adultery cheating why because he lied because he didn't tell you so if i can demonstrate that in islam secret polygamy can be practiced would you not agree with me that Islam teaches injustice? That's a question for you, Elias. If I can show to you that secret marriages can be practiced in Islam, would you agree that that polygamy is unjust? That it is wrong morally? No, that's wrong. One thing I have to say before I directly address that question is I have to rewind the idea that Jesus did abrogate the law of Moses. Now, all mainstream scholarship now indicates that Jesus did not, Jesus did not abrogate the law of Moses. Jesus did not abrogate the law of Moses. Therefore, as a Christian, and all of us here as followers of Abrahamic religions, I believe, yeah, we all we all respect Moses, Abraham. Yeah. Do you respect Moses? Wait, 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 no, no, no. One, one, one question. Just a part of my my Do you respect and adore Moses? Yes. Okay. Did Moses have more than one wife? Yes. Yes. Are you saying that Moses was disrespectful and unjust? No. Okay. So, so no, can I reply? There's one. Can I reply? There's one point. No. Okay. Let, wait, wait, let's do point for point. Okay. Right. Are you, and now notice, Elias has not yet addressed my I know, question. I know. I will address. No, so, what was my question? question? Your question was how I feel about secret second wives. Is, that... is it unjust? First, first of all, no. I wait, do wait, wait. Not... I get to state what my question was, Elias. I said. When I demonstrate that Islam practices the, the, the practice of secret second wives, would, do you think that that is just? If you demonstrate to be the practice that Islam allows second wives, I will say to you that that is not something that I myself would do. And That's not my question. I will say to you it's something that I myself would not do. Great, so I, not my question. I do not have any evidence for it or have seen any evidence for it in any scripture of the deep or anything. Okay, now let me reply. So ladies and gentlemen, he has not actually answered the question that I asked. I'll remind you all what the question was that I actually asked Elias. I didn't ask him, would you do it? That wasn't my question. My question was, is it unjust, ladies and gentlemen, to sleep with a woman who is your wife, who has bore you children, who has dedicated herself to you, and not tell her that you are sleeping with another woman? Bearing in mind that you can receive sexually transmitted diseases where there's no promiscuity involved, like the clap, you can, you can transmit that between one woman and another if one woman has poorer hygiene than the other one. So to not tell the other woman means that you are putting her at risk of sexually transmitted diseases. I want him to answer whether that is just. Now he mentioned about Moses. Moses was a just man. Moses was an honorable man. Moses followed the law of Torah. Torah allowed polygamous marriages 
but Torah did not permit secret polygamous marriages. Furthermore, he's talking to a Christian. Christians follow the new covenant, and in the new covenant, the model is one man and one woman in marriage. That is what we practice. But by doing so, you're denying all of the mountain of evidence that says Jesus, the people who Christians have erroneously worshipped as God, did not abrogate the law of so Moses. So let me address that. Did not abrogate the law let of Moses. Let me address that. Therefore, Paul, the heretic, who did not ever meet Jesus, who is in your holy book, yeah, made a lie upon the words of Jesus, made a lie upon God. Did Jesus eat pork? Right. Of Elias. course you didn't eat pork. Elias. Yeah, you Christians eat pork. Jesus shall I, shall I address and the followers of Jesus all were polygamous. They were polygamous. Shall I follow? Let's address that question. But now you're saying that Moses, Abraham, all of the pre... What would you say? The Old Testament. Shall I address that question? Prophets are unjustified in their practice of having multiple wives. Okay, Elias, let me reply. What I would say is who is better at judgment here? Is it Musa, Moses? Is it Abraham? Yeah, with Sada and Hajar. Or is it Paul, the heretic? Or this okay, no, no, right, ladies and gentlemen, let's just be clear. Notice he still has not addressed the question I asked about secret marriages in Islam, about whether they are just or unjust to the first wife. Notice he's avoided that. But he has talked about Jesus abolishing the law. Let us be clear, Jesus said not one jot, not one tittle, not one letter or stroke of the law shall disappear until... Did everyone hear that word? Until... Did everyone hear that word? Until all has been accomplished, all has been fulfilled. So in other words, in the world view of Jesus, there is a time coming where the law of Moses will disappear. It will be fulfilled. And when is that time, ladies and gentlemen? According to the Old Testament, according to Moses and Isaiah, the Old Testament prophets, that time comes, why? When the Messiah comes. Because the Messiah will unite Jews and Gentiles. And if the Jews and the Gentiles are united in the church, well, what happens to the laws of separation? They have to disappear. They have to go away so that Gentiles and Jews can be united. Jesus said that it is not what goes into the mouth that makes a man unclean, but what comes out of the heart that makes a man unclean. I am Messiah. Your wudu, you are liar. Your wudu does I not make Messiah. you clean, ladies and gentlemen. If you, ladies and gentlemen, are practicing polygamy and secret polygamy, you are an adulteress. And it doesn't matter if you avoid pork. Let me just point out, Jesus didn't eat camel meat, but Muhammad ate camel meat. He seems to have forgotten that. Muslims can eat camel meat, and they have to do wudu after eating camel meat, but they can eat it, but for Jesus it was haram. Jesus stood praying, standing up, looking towards heaven, calling God Father. Muslims look down. They don't address God as Father. Christ worshipped in a temple with priests. Muslims have no priests. So if we're going to do who's more like Jesus game, he's going to lose. Now I want him to address the original topic and stop running away from okay. the topic. Right. Is the practice of having second secret wives just or unjust to your first wife? I tell you what, my friend, because you just put in quite a lot of different topics there that I think actually do need to be addressed. The who's more like Jesus thing? I mean, there are so many different levels of analysis that we can look at that. Jesus, 40 days and 40 nights in the desert, fasting. What's Ramadan? 
Fasting. Sir? Jesus. What's Lent? Jesus. What's Lent? What's Lent? Give Fasting. It, giving up some chocolate. How many of you really practice Lent in the same degree as we practice Ramadan? How many of you better, really say it? Better. Well, alhamdulillah. Better. They do two big meals, one in the morning and one at night. Alhamdulillah. We do one meal a day. We pray. We pray to the Lord, Allah. Just like Jesus would say in Aramaic, Allah. We pray to him five times a day. How many do you pray? How many do you pray? Christians are praying all the time. Good. It's not in the doctrine though, is it? It's not yes, in the doctrine. it is, Chief. Yes, it's taught to pray all the time. Answer the question. Now come back Muslims, to Muslims. Muslims live in an ascetic way. Jesus was an ascetic. Yes, someone who submits the ego, submits the nafs. We control ourselves. We act in accordance with the divine way. We pray. We fast. We act with peace. Yeah? Christians. Are you sure? Uh, I mean, the real ones amongst us. The real ones amongst us. Alhamdulillah. I think this brother is suffering from a lot of Christophobia right now. I don't have Christophobia. Bigotry listen. against Christians. No, listen, that's not true. He doesn't know enough Christians. I love, in fact, I love, I love, and I'll say this again. I love the Ahl Kitab. I love the people of the book, the Christians and the Jews, but the real practicing ones, because I'm afraid to say my Christian cousins, you are dying in number. Why? Because the doctrine is weak in Islam. We must follow the Quran and the Sunnah. Okay, we can we come back? Right. right. All right, the question. The question. The question you've like avoided, yes. First of all, where is the evidence to say that you can have secret wives? Okay. First of all, you haven't presented it. I'm going to Second present all, it right now. I am saying to you now, as my answer, as a married man, my wife is here. I personally do not want to engage in polygamy and I most certainly do not want to engage in secret polygamy. It is not something that I believe to be correct for sure myself. Right, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. I fully accept that he doesn't want to do it. That's no problem. He's better than Muhammad. No, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, ladies and gentlemen, no, the problem, that. problem is yeah, he can that's do it. That's the problem. He can do it. That's the problem. As a Christian, I can only have one wife. And I can't have secret affairs behind her back. But, according to Sheikh Ibn Jibreen, this is what he says. Who is Sheikh Ibn Jibreen? Who is Sheikh Ibn Jibreen? He is a Muslim scholar of Sharia law. There are many, there are many, there are many Muslim scholars of Sharia law. Oh, oh. Suddenly, Suddenly, that's your scholars of Sharia law. Suddenly, I'm presenting the evidence no, and he has a, a problem. Hang on one moment. Suddenly, I'm presenting okay. the evidence no, and he has a problem. On, Thank on. you, I'm going to carry on. So, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sheikh Ibn Jibreen, who is on ulama, who he is not allowed to speak against as a good Muslim. He can't speak against his ulama. So he mustn't criticize him. Ulama. Gives his fatwa. Gives his fatwa in the books of fiqh about whether in Islamic jurisprudence it is halal for a Muslim to have a secret, adulterous second marriage. This is what he said. Sheikh Ibn Jabreen was asked, is it essential for a marriage to be valid that a man should inform the woman he wants to marry that he, ha he is married to another one? If he is not asked about that, are there any con consequences if he denies it, if he is asked? All right. Listen to what the ulama say. Breathe it. The man is not obliged to tell the woman or her family that he is married if they do not ask him. In other words, according to Muslim scholars, Muslim men can have secret marriages. Let me ask. Let me ask. The lies of the devil they are. He's right. They are the lies of the devil. And if you follow the lies of the devil, those lies will take you to hell. Because those lies, those lies, ladies and gentlemen, will take you to hell. Because this is the deen of shaitan. It is not the deen of God. Okay. First of all, you've just quoted one 
member of the ulama. Yeah, I don't know how many other ulama dispute that point. Okay, so that doesn't necessarily mean anything to me. Okay, but one thing that you did say is that this is the deen of shaitan. This is the deen of the devil. In all of our Abrahamic faiths, the worst sin that one can commit is shirk. The worst sin that one can commit is to associate partners with the one true Tawhidic monotheistic God of Abraham. Yeah. So for you to worship a man, can I get my Quran? For you to worship a man, and then for you to say that we are the Deen of Shaitan. When you worship a finite, mortal member of creation, a blessed one, I'll give him that, a blessed one, but a member of creation nonetheless. Keep going, go. Keep going. What's this you've got in your hand? Right, so, ladies and gentlemen, let's be clear. I will debate him on shirk if he wants to debate on shirk. But the question is about secret marriages. Let's just let's let's just think about why secret marriages are the dean of shaitan. Why, ladies and gentlemen? Why? Because they involve deceit. Because they involve hiding things about yourself that you know to be true. If you're going to share a bed with a woman, okay. it is incumbent upon you, ladies and gentlemen, to be transparent with her what you are doing with your body. I agree, by the way. And he agrees. I agree. Which yeah, means that he's be... now taken a step away from the deen of Islam. No, it isn't. And a step closer to the deen of Christianity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> because, ladies and gentlemen, oh out of the two religions, it is my religion that says it is haram to hide another marriage. It is my religion that says it is haram to have a second wife. His religion says that he can have a second wife, that he doesn't need the permission of his first wife to have a second wife, and he can keep it a secret from his first wife. Your religion, which your means, religion wait, I'm landing, I'm landing. Your One second, I'm landing, and then I'll let you reply. And lay it, ladies and gentlemen, this is the guy. This is the guy. This is the guy that took a swung at me. Listen, Aki. This is the Aki that took a swung at me. Listen, bro, bro, that's not acceptable way to behave. That's not an acceptable way. Listen, yeah, yeah, but listen, mate. You're, you're a representative of Islam. Listen, no, bro, you're a representative. You. You're a representative of Islam. Stop. Stop it. Bro, yes, you are. A bad one. Yes, you're a bad one. Say it. Right. Yes. Well, listen right now, I just point ball. I'm gonna. Hey, if you take a swing at me, I've got a Quran under my arm. If you take a swing at me, suck my fucking dick, boy. Suck my fucking dick. Look at him. Look at him. He's been fasting. He's been fasting, aren't you? Look how you come out. Leave him. Leave him. You fasting for your sins? Now look, he's behaving. This is why we must stand up to them. What a shame. What do you mean, them? Them. No, because these on, Islamists. Islamists? I myself, Islamists. I myself, is he a Muslim? Muslim? I myself am a Muslim. I would never ever say that someone is not a Muslim. What I can say is that right now his behavior is not in accordance with the way that it should be. But I will never say that he is not a Muslim. My, man is, my man is straying. That's why we should stand up to him. My man is straying. My man is straying. Now, ladies and gentlemen, okay. let's come back to the topic. I'm going to try and land my point so you can reply. The reason why it is unjust, ladies and gentlemen, like, is one, if the man, if the man has secret children that the first wife doesn't know about, and the man dies, according to Sharia law, both women are entitled to an equal share of the inheritance and so are all of their children. But if the second wife is secret, she will be at a disadvantage to claim her rights. Secondly, secondly, it involves putting the first wife at risk. Because if the man contracts a sexual disease from the secret second wife, he could infect the first wife. It involves a betrayal of the trust of the first wife. Because the first wife thinks I'm in a monogamous relationship right now, but the man knows that there's a polygamous relationship going on. And all of these are unfair to the woman, ladies and gentlemen. In Christianity, all of these problems are avoided. So reply to the point, go on. I think it's hypocrisy par excellence. 
for someone to say yeah. that because of this, you know, th this me I said it's hypocrisy. Your points are hypocrisy. Why? It was the Sharia, the Sharia law, the Islamic law that bestowed rights upon women. You mentioned, you mentioned inheritance rights. Where are the inheritance rights for women in Christian doctrine? Where are they, brother? Where are they? I'll let you finish no, your no, 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 answer this. Where are the inheritance rights or the divorce rights for women in Christianity? There was no liberalization and equality for women in Christianity. Whereas in Islam, the religion that everybody is slandering, yeah, to be sexist, to be sexist, which is your whole, the whole premise of your argument, yeah, was the religion that allowed women to get divorced if they were in oppressive marriages or for whatever reason they wanted, that allowed women to get inheritance from the husband or from the father. Yep. So hang on a minute, which is more unjust? That, you had a lot to say a moment ago, do you have anything to say? You, you had something to say, sir, behind the camera. What's the answer? What's the answer to this? Okay, do you want me to reply? Yeah, I'd love to see. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. notice yeah. that I have made a substantial criticism of the Islamic practice of secret second marriages and absolutely no defense was given Not related to the only the only argument was yeah. is we muslims gave rights to women and you christians did exactly. not exactly he doesn't know what he's talking about ladies and gentlemen how so? How so? i'm going to tell you why because until christianity came along and converted europe women were not even given a choice in marriage it was because of Christianity that women could refuse marriage. In, it was because of Christianity that women received equality in marriage because just like in Islam, the Roman pagans practiced polygamy and the Jews of the Old Covenant practiced polygamy. Equality. And it they was, ladies and gentlemen, and no he's rattled, ladies Where's and gentlemen. The no, I'm he's not. rattled, no, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies You're and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. You're not answering, ladies my, and point. Gentlemen. You're not answering my point. Christianity gave women yeah. these yeah. rights yeah. yeah. and Islam yeah. exactly. is taking them away. He's taking them away. And he's, yeah. he Let's talked no, no. about Let inheritance. Focus. Let us focus. He talked about inheritance. He talked about inheritance, ladies and gentlemen. In Christianity, a daughter and a son can e receive equal share of can, their parents' wealth. Can, but in Islam, a daughter receives less than a son. Yes. Less than a son. Where is it? Ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Where is but, it? but I am not making an argument for liberal society. I'm a Christian, not a liberal. And I am talking about the fact that in Islam, and he hasn't addressed this point at all, yes, that in Islam yeah. you can have secret second marriages. We've spoken about that ad nauseum. He has yeah, not defended it yeah. once. He has just it. tried to change the okay. topic, and I don't blame him okay. because there is no okay. moral defense on, for the immorality of Islam. On the point. Yeah. On the point. I, I, yeah, and I'm not a scholar. Let me just come out and say, yeah, yeah. I've been a little bit audacious having this conversation. I am not a scholar, yeah? but I have read. But I have read the Quran, and I read the Quran on a daily basis. And the Hadith, I'm trying to read as well. And I had never ever come across anything about secret marriages. It was new to me. It was new to me when I came across it. Okay, okay. It was new to me when I came along and had this conversation. The brother here, Ben. Ben. Bob. Bob. Sorry. Sorry, right, Robert. Worry. Bob. Call me whatever you like. <laughs> <laughs> Bob presented one excerpt from one shake. Yeah, about it, about it, and then quoted it as absolute biblical fact. Now, for me, look, I said this is not a practice that I will do. That's my answer. It's not a practice that I will do. Whether or not an obscure shake says it's acceptable or not is whatever. I would not do it. But now moving on the conversation, moving on to the general point about equality between the genders. There is no, between the sexes, should I say, there is no argument here. Where is it within biblical doctrine that it says that not, not, not women can get 50% of the inheritance, but women should get 50% of the inheritance. Women must. In the Sharia, women's rights are enshrined enshrined yeah which was a complete liberalization for the abrahamic place and for the world at that right. point and your your comparison of saying in the pre christian era in europe 
uh, that women had no rights. I mean, hang on a minute, we're talking about so many different disparate yeah. cultures. How could you make such a sweet thing? Don't worry, bye bye. Islam every day, come up. Islam every day, come up. <laughs> are you doing Elias? Elias, are you done? Yeah. I'm almost done. But why is that? That's a good point. Why is it that every day Islam come up and Christianity go down? Why is that point? Why is that point? Why? Everywhere. 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 Yeah. Let's just look. I know that, look, yeah. I know that you're Elias. Anyway, can I reply? I'm done. I'm right, done. ladies and gentlemen. But Robert, wait, 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 wait ladies and gentlemen. I'm done. Are oh, you done? I just want to leave him with this point. He talked about shirk. Let me show him shirk in his Quran. Shirk, ladies and gentlemen. In the Quran, ladies and gentlemen. So what is shirk, ladies and gentlemen? Is it to ascribe partners to Allah? Yeah. To worship other than Allah, yeah. or to give the attributes of Allah to someone other than Allah? Am I being fair, Elias? Yeah. Uh, I would say yes. To give praise and worship to something other than the one, or to give partners to Allah in that which Allah is doing, like saying Allah had partners in creation, or Allah had partners. Of right. Yeah. Yeah. You all that, heard. That domain, that domain is his own. Great. You all heard that I have given the correct definition of shirk. Now let me show you shirk in the Quran. Surah 33, Ayah 36. It is not fitting for a believer, man or woman, when a matter has been decided by Allah and His Messenger. Sorry, what? And his yeah, messenger. And the prophet. So Allah has a partner that's in semantics. making a decision. Ladies and gentlemen. That is rubbish. That, that is shirk. That's ladies and gentlemen. gentlemen. That is semantics. Go on, explain why it's extremely, semantics. Extremely, extremely weak argument. Go on, explain. I don't even first explain you why. You read one particular You read one particular English translation, which may well have been a mistranslation. If we read it in the exact Arabic, it might not have said and Arabic is a very, very common complex language with wow. many layers. Wow. And anyway, it does. Wow. I've checked it. Alright, it does. And Muslims have confirmed that it does. It does. Okay. All right. it's 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 it is obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not saying that Muhammad makes the decision. Allah makes the decision and Rasulullah delivers the decision. Okay. It is not that he makes it. And anyway, I'm done. I'm done. Right, one, one, one second. No, 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 I'm done. Wait, wait, I was wait. done two minutes ago. Okay, Elias, I want to give you. I, I respect the I respect fight. You. Let me give you a gift. Yeah. Don't give me a Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I won't give you a Bible. I'll give you something else. That's really good. Robert. Okay, good sport, good sport. Who's Robert? That's his new name. Right, that's your real name. <laughs> Shut up, Jason. <laughs> right, okay, you don't want a Bible, so I'm not going to give you a Bible. I don't want any pamphlets about.